Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Graham. Richard and the tech team have worked another miracle already this morning, and uh, and we're back online, aren't we, Jeff? Yeah, <laughs> double thumbs up. Thank you. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Today, the first Sunday of Lent, the um, the gospel reading is the temptations of Jesus. So we're going to have a go at this uh, jazzy song on the the story and the themes of today's service. So I'll ask uh, the band to launch into it, and I haven't sung it before either. So we'll just have a crack at singing as we go. We shall. Um, Mandy, where are you? <laughs> everywhere which way when we're faced with big temptations time to heed what Jesus says bread alone it just won't be we must be stoned not to work take the word of God to heart each day finding everything the Always subtle in the sky. Who's the one in life we live for? Who's the one with who will try? Come and worship God completely. God alone is who we serve. Take the word of God to our heart each day. God alone is who we serve. Finished, Richard. <laughs> nice one. Thank you, Ben, for having a really good crack at that and for bringing James Morrison along this morning. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land from where we gather, where we gather and from where we broadcast today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging and pledge our ongoing commitment to reconciliation and justice for First Peoples and others in this land. <laughs> Let us come together before God, our consoler in distress. Let us come together before God, our hiding place from troubles. Let us come together before God, whose love surrounds us. And let us rejoice in the Lord, our comforter and refuge. Our opening prayer has a, um, a, a line of trust and commitment for you to join in the response, if you would. When we get things wrong, we place our trust in you, Lord. When we feel lost and alone, we place our trust in you, Lord. 
When we're scared and hurting, we place our trust in you, Lord. And when we face the unknown, we place our trust in you, Lord, relying on your endless love. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Come to the waters. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, receive what you need, what your spirit craves, be refreshed from within, renewed from the heart, come to the waters and live. Oh, everyone who thirsts. Welcome everyone on Zoom, on video, on the phone. It's great to have such a good turnout on Pancake Day. People accuse me of turning up when the food is <laughs> available. And welcome back to Ann Jones and Rosie. Lovely to have you here today amongst us. Plenty of people who you're very familiar with, of course. Um, to have you here. Our prayer of confession, let us pray. Lord, we are sorry when we're tempted by all that the world has to offer us. The temptation to be relevant and popular, to be spectacular and successful, the temptation for power and wealth and so many things. We're sorry when we make the wrong decisions. We're sorry for the temptations that lead to addiction, corruption, and ultimately hurt other people. Forgive us, Lord. We seek your wisdom and discernment to make better choices, to be rooted in you. We thank you that in our weaknesses, we can be made strong and that it is in weakness, in the desert times of our lives, that amazing things can happen. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Though tempted and though we make bad choices, through the cross we are assured of healing and forgiveness. 
in our weakness, we are made strong. We are forgiven and God gives us a blank canvas to start again, to create together something beautiful. Amen. We stand and sing together the great love of God is revealed in the sun. bit of a different setup here today. First of all though, let's catch up on your news. Any highlights for the week to tell us about? Uh, for basketball, I lost my five baskets. Oh, pretty close. Did you have a good game? Did you yes. get your hands on a bit? Yeah, cool. And school's, school's going all right? Yep. Start of the year, beautiful. Do uh, and I also got my white belt for Clarky. Which belt? My white belt for the juniors. Oh, so you're up to into the juniors now, yep. white belt for Clarky. Wow. Did you have to um, do a few things to get that? Uh, yes, we had to do the zero rule and the one rule. It's the one rules when People have to ask you one time and the zero was when they have to ask you zero times. Okay. And so what will you be trying to get to in time? What's your, what uh, would you like to get to in terms of the belt? Well, I've got up to my brown belt on Little Ninjas and so the juniors I'm hoping to get up to about like my purple belt, my purple, purple belt, yeah. which is before the brown belt, yeah. before I'm belt behind. It's, it's great to have an aim like that and something to work but towards. But if you go up to the black belt, it has like one carter, but there's 100 moves in the carter. My oh, goodness. A hundred moves in the Cardo, only yeah, one so for the black belt. Yeah, so if you go up to the black belt, you do it. And some, and some teachers are teaching classes that are not up to the black belt, but they're up to the black belt, so that's why they can become a teacher. So ones that are on to teachers, they can actually be on a black belt as well. So maybe one day you will aspire to be a black belt and be a teacher. Yeah. Maybe. At some stage I wouldn't mind seeing a few moves. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Hazelwood's offering to come down here oh. to you to, to do a few things with him one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Charlie, you know how to do the number 40, don't you? Today we've got all this sand here representing something. What do you think sand might be representing? Can you be thinking while you're doing the 40? Thinking and talking? Uh, it might be representing, uh, I forgot. 
What do you think, Joyce? You reckon the desert? Yeah, so this sand that we've got here is representing the desert. And uh, because our story today about Jesus is set in the desert or the wilderness where everything's very stark. There's not, there's virtually nothing to eat, very little to to drink. And um, Jesus has gone there to have a good think and preparation for the, for the job that he's got to do for God. And um, beautifully done. So there's our 40 in our stones in the desert. You, know, you probably don't know this answer, but I'll just check just in case. Do you know, do you know why we'd be putting 40 on there? It's a bit of a tough one. No. So in... When Jesus was in the desert doing this preparation for his, um, his work for God, he was there for... 40 days. Got it! 40 years. 40, 40 days. days. Yes, spot on. Well done, 40 days. So that I, I also kind of knew that because if you put four zero in the desert, then it would not know that people were actually in the desert for 40 days. There you go. Very good. And we are in a season, a church season now, that goes for 40 days plus Sundays. Um, Partly in remembrance of this story of Jesus' temptation. And this season is called Lent. And it started last Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. I I was at church. Oh, okay. And on the day before Ash Wednesday, the day before Lent started, mm-hmm. for centuries people have celebrated Pancake Day, Shrove Tuesday. Now, we weren't all together at church on Shrove Tuesday, so we're doing that today. Did you notice next door when you came in? Yes. Yeah, big setup for a yummy morning tea with pancakes going to happen there. And so lots of people doing lots of work, so we can join in that tradition of pancakes because for centuries people said well on the day before Lent we'll have a big old feast and we'll cook up everything that's still in the cupboard that we need to and put it into pancakes and eat it up and then for the next 40 days we're going to be a little bit more serious than usual and really think about our lives and what we're doing for God just like Jesus did in the 40 days in the desert being tempted that we're having our story about today. So when the story comes along, I don't know if you'll still be here or not. You or Sue might choose to see the, the story because your, your dad doesn't usually wear a tea towel on his head. Um, Saturday nights he might, but on the, not usually to church. And that's helping us to realise that he's playing Jesus today. And um, somebody else in the congregation is going to um, represent the devil and, um, and the sorts of words that, are, that he's said to Jesus and the sorts of temptations Jesus had in the desert. So while your mum's reading the narration of the gospel story, your dad and James are going to uh, say the voices from here. And then later when we have the sermon... Um, those two characters are still going to be here to try and help us to uh, enter into this sense of challenge that Jesus had when he was in the desert. So there you go. Before that, though, we're going... Oh, another thing, reason why the stones are good to have here it's is... because there's lots of rocks and stones in the desert. That's one big reason. And there's lots of dust. And dust, and sometimes they have huge sandstorms, and they all blow up. I know that. I've seen a sandstorm in a book. I've seen a sandstorm in a book, so you know about that. But also, because of those stones are there, one of the temptations Jesus says to the devil says to Jesus is, "Well, why don't you turn those stones into bread to eat? Because you must be pretty hungry by now." You've got some power. You can make shortcuts. You can look after yourself and other people if you use your powers those ways. But 
Jesus knows that's not part of God's plan for him, the work that God has for him. And so he has to resist that temptation. But our song today is um, like a rock. (laughs) God is under our feet. So uh, let's sing that together and do the actions. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river up to the ocean, our home is in God evermore. Before we have that gospel reading with our characters up the front we'll have the uh, the old testament reading from genesis that um has some pretty strong connections to the gospel reading the first reading comes from genesis 2 verses 15 to 17 and chapter 3 1 to 7 then the lord god placed the man in the garden of eden to cultivate it and guard it He told him, you may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, except the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. Now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. The snake asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from any tree in the garden? We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit and that the tree of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake replied, that's not true. You will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat and she thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given understanding and realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and covered themselves. reading is Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. Then the spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and nights without food, Jesus was hungry. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says, human beings cannot live on bread alone but need every word that God speaks. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, the holy city, set him on the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands, so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. Jesus answered, But the scripture also says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all their greatness. All this I will give you, the devil said, if you kneel down and worship me. Then Jesus answered, Go away, Satan. The scripture says, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left Jesus and the angels came and helped him. Let us pray.
loving God, we are so thankful for your patience with us, your forgiveness, your wisdom and your strength offered to us each new day. Please help us to be open to it all again this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. There's an Australian Idol contestant who performed a song last week with some very high notes. Do you remember this one, shall I? You do remember this one too. That she couldn't reach in the performance. And one judge said, it doesn't actually matter. Just sing the notes you can sing and you, you make do with the other, on the other ones. That's what I do. And another one said, sing the songs that are in your best range. That's what Kylie does. That's what J-Lo does. And he implied that those two megastar pop singers had limited vocal range but knew what they could sing and did that well. She should follow that example and stick to her range. I wonder what you would think about that advice if you're watching it. I was, I was really mixed in it, in my thoughts about it. Should she be aspiring to sing a song that requires a great range? She's only young. Can't she have a crack and really stretch herself? Or should she stick with the range she has and sing it confidently? As I said, I had mixed feelings about it because on one hand, it did dawn on me some years ago that I need, if I want to perform, I need to limit the types of songs that I attempted to perform if I wanted to, to sound okay. So I get what the judge was saying in that sense. But I couldn't help thinking part of the glory of life and the gift from God, I think, is pushing out your boundaries and achieving more and doing more and becoming more. It's a human instinct and a drive, it would seem. And it can be a wonderful life-giving motivator, striving for improvement, seeking and aspiring when the parameters are right. Now, the reason I've been watching Australian Idol this season is because I know one of the contestants and he embodies that sort of striving. Royston grew up in the tiny remote town of Old Mapoon in Cape York. He attended primary school at the small local state school with virtually all Aboriginal students except for Zane, whose mother, Reverend Michelle Cook, was the local Uniting Church minister and whose father, James Hughes, worked with Uniting Church Frontier Services and United Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress. And some of you heard me have a little rave about them at the um, concert year before last here, where we raised funds for <laughs> frontier services. Anyway, Royston was a much-loved member of the youth groups and a helper with events like Messy Church. And in many ways, Royston was formed and developed in uniting church contexts that honoured and appreciated his heritage, his family, his culture, as well as his gifts and potential. So Michelle and James gave much love and energy to him and they continue to be significant mentors and supporters for Royston, even though they've moved on to other ministries in other states. I got to know Royston through James and Michelle and an exchange type program with my school in Launceston that was facilitated by the Uniting Church Commission for Mission. So when Royston was 12, he was the youngest of a small group of Indigenous students from Cape York who James brought to Launceston for a fortnight of sharing and learning and developing their cultural capacities. 
most of the students who came were a few years older than 12. But Royston had a gift for singing and a sunny personality and an aspiration to do something with them. So James took the risk, despite all the challenges and complexities of such a trip, of bringing this child to grow his experience and potential further. So Royston made the most of every opportunity and relationship, including performing for 600 students at a Scotch Oakburn College assembly. And now 11 years later, we watch him perform on television and we feel a great sense of joy and hope for him and a bit of pride for having had a small part in his journey. He aspires to make the most of his passion and gift for singing, but he's also quick to let you know that he aspires to be a role model to inspire other Indigenous children just like he was inspired by Jessica Mowboy, who won Australian Idol some years back. So Royston's in the final 12 contestants with some decisive performances televised tonight and tomorrow. So please think about watching and maybe voting for him via the text message system. And I will be so excited if he wins the contest. So proud and pleased for him and the increased potential for him to become that inspirational Indigenous role model. I will be delighted, but I will also intensify my praying for him that he might retain his sense of who he is, who he belongs to, so that he might continue to trust in God with him, guiding and equipping him. Because he will face that great temptation of thinking you've made it and you can do it without God and God's guidance. And today's readings were about that familiar human tendency. Today's familiar Old Testament reading was set in the beautiful Garden of Eden and when the serpent cunningly got to the climax of his pitch about taking the forbidden fruit for yourself in defiance of God's instructions. And the serpent disputes God's warning not to eat that fruit. God said that because he knows when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. Hmm. The woman thought how wonderful it would be to become wise and she and her husband ate the fruit that they thought would make them like God they took for themselves the fruit that they thought could make them wise enough to do without God and God's guidance now our gospel reading is set in the desert not the garden of Eden and it's after lengthy fasting not surrounded by abundant fruit trees but it has a similar focus. A similar conversation takes place between Jesus, who Paul, St. Paul later calls the new Adam, and the devil. But in this conversation, Jesus counters and unravels those seemingly persuasive biblical arguments of the devil. And he reverses the entanglement of sin by insisting on God's place and priority. You have got some fallen in stone to turn into bread. Yes, I am hungry. If you are God's son, you could feed yourself, couldn't you? No need to wait for God to provide. And then you could feed other hungry people too, eh? This world can be so unfair and unfriendly, but you could make such a difference, couldn't you? The scripture says, human beings cannot live on bread alone, but need every word 
that God speaks. Hmm, okay then. Look, take a look at the holy city. All those people in Jerusalem who are downtrodden and discouraged, desperate for a hero, a messiah like you. If you are God's son, throw yourself down. For the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands, so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. Oh, then they will know your abilities, and then they will want to listen to you and follow you. How wonderful for you and for all of them. Yes, they need a Messiah, but not one like that. The scripture also says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, ruling Jerusalem does not tempt you. Well, let me show you the rest of the world and all its kingdoms. Aren't they magnificent? And they could all belong to you with a little help from me. You know how I infiltrate their minds and their communities. Bit of ego here, bit of power there, bit of resentment and lack of forgiveness, a bit of extravagant self-indulgence to top it off and I own them. You can have them too. If you will recognise my greatness and bow your knee to me in my ways. Go away, Satan. The scripture says, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Snob. <laughs> then the devil left Jesus. And angels actually came and helped him. And the journey began. Jesus knew who he was and to whom he belonged and for whom he was going to give his life. So I suspect there are not many of us aspiring to be an Australian idol though there would be a few candidates over there who could give it a whirl. But most of us have things we've aspired to or things we've achieved that are sources of pride and satisfaction. So sometimes we have been tempted by success or popularity or recognition when it feels like you are so good, you have made it. No need for God in your life anymore. You've made it to the mountaintop yourself so you can keep doing things your own way. No more trying to discern God's way of love in all parts of your life. And most of us have aspired to achieve a good objective but been seduced by a shortcut or a quick fix that avoids the tough road of love and integrity little shortcut around those bits where you need to make sacrifices or endure hostility rather than compromise on truth and justice and godliness. So, each year the season of Lent is a reminder that while we might fall for those temptations fairly naturally and easily at times, we also are committed to the one who had the foresight, courage and humility to say no. No to power and popularity, ego, shortcuts and quick fixes. No to anything that compromised his purposes for God. And though Jesus was the human who had the most claim to equal status with God, he humbled himself to serve and to give his life for all so that we might have the forgiveness and the grace that we need so that we might recover from any failures to aspire again and to live lives of abundance, service and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we worship God with our offering,
Let's have a, another go at singing the temptation song. God of suffering love, we offer our gifts and our lives to the way of Jesus. May we grow together in faith as we serve our neighbours through the company of your spirit. Amen.
After the benediction today, we have a beautiful new blessing song from Peter. Peter will um, sing the first couple of verses for us, then I encourage you to join in if you're confident with the third verse. Go out into the world in the righteousness of Christ. Do not hide your sin, but trust in God who gives mercy and love. Do not be afraid to face the wilderness, but do not compromise with evil. And may God be your shelter to save you from ruin. May Christ be your teacher and show you the path to walk. And may the Spirit encircle you with songs of freedom. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Walk on in the hole. Walk on in joy. Walk on in peace and rest and blessed in love and the rest you shall rest in love and walk on Walk strong in joy, walk strong in peace and rest, be blessed in love, and the rest shall Run long in hope. Run long, run long in joy. Run long in peace and rest and be blessed in love. And the rest shall rest in love rest in love shall rest in love shall rest in love